everybody and welcome to our home here in Brittany in northwest France. I'm Jane, my husband Mike is behind the camera. We're British, early retirees, debt and mortgage free and living a thrifty, frugal and money saving life here in France. And every Wednesday we share a midweek money chat with you. And this week's is quite a light canter really. Looking at 20 old fashioned frugal living tips. Without further ado, let's get started. The first one, if you're in an old fashioned frugal home like mine, or maybe yours too, tell me in the comments below if this is you. You keep your jam jars. You use those jam jars for everything, don't you? You're going out for the day and you're taking a bit of milk or a bit of coffee with you, you're sticking it in a jam jar. You're making your own jam, your own pickles, your own preserves. You're using those jam jars over and over again. So there you go. First, old fashioned frugal living tips. Keep your old jam jars to reuse them. Now I might complain about packaging on food, but if I can use that packaging again, I do. Often I buy plant-based butter and it comes in a plastic tub. I keep all of those plastic tubs. I freeze my leftovers. I might do some batch cooking. I might just have one portion at a time of soup. I keep them. There's plenty of food containers that you get that might come in a foil dish. I keep them and use them again. So take a look at your food containers when anything you've bought comes in any kind of container and think, can I repurpose this? Can I use it again? Keep those food containers. If you're like me and you want to keep a good pantry, you want to make sure that if you open anything, whether it's rice or pasta or cereals, that they keep well. Now, this is where you can take old containers and keep them, whether ice cream has come in it, whether it's a, one of those great big pickle jars. Those big pickle jars are awesome for keeping oats in them, for keeping rice in them, for keeping pasta in them or keeping open flour. The other thing, you do not need to go out and buy brand new food containers. Keep your eyes open for those in your charity shops and at car boot sales. So you can just keep secondhand and reuse containers to store your food in your pantry. You do not need to go out and spend loads of money on all this new stuff. four is a bit of a personal bugbear of mine. Now, before I go into this, I am not saying never eat out. I am not saying never buy yourself a coffee. What I am saying is a good old fashioned frugal tip is to treat those as a treat. Eat out on special occasions. Buy yourself a coffee when you meet up with your friends and go out for a coffee and sit in a coffee shop and enjoy the ambience. But stop eating out all the time. And some people do. Two or three or more times a week, they're getting take out food. They're picking up coffee sometimes every single day. Proper old fashioned frugal living tip. Take your own flask of coffee, make your own packed lunch, and only eat out when it is a special occasion. On to number five. Now clothes are a precious commodity. Once upon a time, all clothes were well made. They took a lot of time and effort to make. They were often homemade. They were often made locally and they were expensive. Maybe that's not the case now, but it still doesn't mean we have to just throw clothes away. We can all learn to do a little bit of hand sewing and a little bit of mending. So there you go. The fifth old fashioned frugal living tips. Something's wrong with your clothes? Mend them. Well, 
On to my next point, and Mike and I were reflecting and this did make me feel very, very old. I can remember when you could get everything delivered from the milkman. One of those things I used to get delivered was a big brown paper sack of potatoes, some 25 kilos of potatoes, like a massive great big sack of them. And they would last me two or three weeks. Now, picture this if you would, you're in the supermarket and you're in the freezer aisle. Look at the potato products. There's everything from potato smiley faces to frozen mashed potato to frozen roast potatoes to frozen chips don't these people own a potato peeler old-fashioned frugal living tip peel your own potatoes Now, we're in the same supermarket as all those potato products of all those people who don't own a potato peeler. Now go up and down the cleaning aisle and have a look, would you? Have a look at all the products that are there that are basically a fancy cloth. Those things that you clip on your mop, it's a fancy cloth, isn't it? Those things you pull out of a packet and you wipe your furniture with, we used to call those a duster. All those things that you wipe out and clean around your toilet with, we used to call that a bit of bleach on a cleaning cloth. So there you go. There is the next tip. You can obviously cut up a load of old clothes if you want to, but you can just go and buy a load of reusable cleaning cloths and use them for years on end in the same ways that you can have reusable handkerchiefs and reusable napkins. We've been using the same cloth napkins at our dining table for years and years. You can pick them up in charity shops. They really don't cost a lot of money, but we do not need to buy these disposable cloths of one sort or another. We can save a good old fashioned load of money by doing what we've always done by using napkins, handkerchiefs and cleaning cloths. I'm on a roll today of other things that completely get on my nerves and you'll notice this now I've said it to you but if you ever watch any of those TV cooks or TV chefs or any of those lovely entertaining people they've never got an apron on ever so here's the next good old-fashioned frugal living tip to save your clothes from getting stains or tomato sauce on them or pasta sauce on them or grease on them wear an apron they're another thing you can pick up in a charity shop or quite cheaply in any shops really or make your own. So there you go. The next frugal living tip will save you a mass of money and it will save you wasting your clothes or spoiling your clothes. Wear an apron, not just when you're cooking, but if you're doing any DIY or painting or housework, put an apron on. Now I love nosing around our supermarkets. They're massive, aren't they? And they're very entertaining. But I walk around them looking at sauces in jars and casseroles in freezers and quiches in boxes. And I stand there and look at thinking to myself, can't people make that? So there's the next frugal living tip. I'm not suggesting that you go out there and become the next Gordon Ramsay. I'm not just a housewife. I'm no chef not at all but the next frugal living tip is learn a basic repertoire of cooking skills can you make your own pastry your own pie crust can you make your own pasta sauces can you make a basic white sauce or a cheese sauce can you make a basic quiche or an omelette these are very simple cooking skills that will save you from ever having to buy it or somebody else having to make it for you. The next one is to learn to stock a basic pantry. In these times of rising prices, we really do need to stock things away. And that needs to suit you, and it needs to suit your family, and it needs to suit your storage facilities. But there you go. 
all of us know this, if we have to save some money, it's learn to stock a basic pantry. The next old fashioned frugal living tip that we all knew growing up, we saw our mothers do it, we saw our grandmothers do it, we all used to know how to do this, is to deal with spots and stains on our clothes. If you get something on your clothing, it's great straight away to get at least some water on it, rub a bit of soap on it and break down that stain as fast as you can because it'll often act as a food dye and stain your clothes permanently if you don't. So there you go. You can look this up on the internet, whatever you get on your clothes, you can go to YouTube, you can look this up, but learn how to treat stains on your clothing so you save your clothes. Now in the past people kept themselves busy and they kept themselves active and doing that they kept themselves healthy and we can do that now. We don't need to go and buy an expensive bike, we don't need to buy an expensive bike that links to the internet and internet classes and all of that fancy stuff. We don't need to do any of that at all. There's plenty of ways to exercise very, very cheaply. The cheapest one is obviously walking. We can do lots of, we can stay active with housework. We can stay active in the garden with weeding and cutting and pushing a lawnmower up and down and bringing wood in and chopping wood. There are so many ways. Cleaning your own windows, that's a great way of getting some good arm exercise there. So there you go. Find ways that you can keep yourselves fit and active for free. Next one, war. This one is a massive, massive, massive bugbear of mine. And that's the thing that once upon a time, people were very thrifty and very frugal and it's a real old fashioned thing. Do not waste water. How many people waste water now? Are you one of those people who washes your dishes under a running tap, just leaving the tap running, 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 running? What a waste of water. We British people have always had a washing up bowl. We've washed up all the dishes, all the dishes from the cleanest first, which are glasses, and then onto cutlery, then onto dishes and plates, and last of all, our saucepans. And then when we've washed up with all of that water, we've usually put that down the drain because it's very, very dirty, and we've filled up the bowl one more time with some nice warm water to rinse our dishes. But we don't need the tap running. We do not need to leave the shower running when we are having a wash. Get wet, turn the shower off wash yourself all over with soap and shampoo on your hair then turn the shower back on and wash yourselves we don't not need to flush the toilet with pure fresh drinking water how many of us growing up saved the bath water or shower water by leaving the plug in to scoop that water out and use it to flush the toilet it's crazy isn't it pure fresh drinking water being used to flush the toilet it's madness so Use some of those old fashioned living tips to stop wasting water and it will save loads of money. It's a funny old world and I'm older and older every day and I really don't get it. So many people have this massive sense of need to buy stuff all the time for fun, whether it's shopping for fun or going to places that cost loads of money and really I think we've lost some of that old-fashioned skills of just finding joy in everyday life. Those entertainments for free. What's wrong with meeting up with your friend in their kitchen and sitting down over a cup of tea and a gossip? What's wrong with sitting down with your family at the end of the day and playing card games like Uno? card games and you know they're just such fun aren't they and board games and reading what's happened to the old-fashioned entertainment of men having sheds where they're fettling and fixing things in sheds i know it's not just my husband who's always fettling and fixing things in a shed but plenty of them out there but there's plenty of them who don't what's happened to those lovely old-fashioned 
entertainment, so crochet and knitting and sewing and quilting. Find your own entertainment. We don't need to leave our own home and pay other people to entertain us. Now I grew up with a particularly extraordinarily thrifty money-saving dad. Uh, one thing that my dad knew when growing up is if there was any storm, there was firewood going free. And my dad knew with his friend where there would be trees coming down. I remember growing up with Dutch elm disease and trees having to come down all over the place. And the pair of them, and I saw them and I learned from this. And I learned from this that, you know, you can cut up your own wood you can then chop it and stack it and season it for a few years and then you can burn it yourself. So I know that that is a very, very old fashioned skill and most of you don't live where you can possibly do that. But if you can, it's a great skill to have a proper old fashioned skill, cutting your own wood, splitting and stacking and seasoning your own firewood. <music> If you've been here a while, you'll know that this is a passion of mine and a bit of a, a bit of something I don't really understand of other people really. And that is, if you have the climate for it, line dry your own clothes. Now I'm British and we do not have the climate for it, but most British people don't own a tumble dryer. Most people here in France don't have the climate for it and don't own a tumble dryer, but we really make the most of every opportunity to dry our clothes outside. We've got all the expressions for it. Sometimes you're just gonna give it a blow through. It means you're gonna catch, you're gonna put the washing out in between showers. Sometimes your washing's been in and out three times in a day. And you know there are people all over the world who dry their clothes, whether it's snowing, it's windy, they just get their washing dry. So if you live, where it's dry and it's sunny, come on, dry your clothes outside. <laughs> Another part of laundry. How many of you wear something once? You've not done anything energetic or sweaty or dirty or smelly, and you take that item of clothing off at the end of the day, stick it in the laundry basket and wash it the next day. How many of you are putting a load of laundry on every single day? Well, here's an old fashioned thing for you. You don't need to wash clothes that aren't dirty. Fair enough, you don't want to wear it again tomorrow, but just hang it back up in your wardrobe and wear it another day. Towels, you get out of the shower, you're lovely and clean. You get the towel, you dry yourself, and then you stick your towel straight in the laundry basket Hmm, we don't need to do that. Go into a good old-fashioned frugal home and you will see up on the landing upstairs, over the banister, all the towels are drying. They're hanging over doors in doorways. And those towels get used all week long and washed at the weekend. Same as clothing gets worn all week long and washed at the weekend. Don't suggest you do that with underwear, but all other items of clothing are perfectly fine to wear again. <laughs> now, just as in the same way as it's a terrible waste of water to wash your dishes under a running tap, it's also a terrible waste of water to peel your vegetables or wash your vegetables or peel your potatoes under a running tap. So we old fashioned frugal people, we use the washing up bowl to do that. And afterwards, we've taken our water outside, we've held on to the carrot peelings and the potato peelings, and we've tipped the water in our pot plants outside the back door. And then we've walked a few more steps and we've chucked our carrot peelings and potato peelings on top of the compost pile. So there you go, use a washing up bowl when you're peeling vegetables and then keep the peelings and chuck them on the compost heap. Do you know sadly one of the most wasted foods is bread and yet 
It takes so much to make it if it's been made in a factory. It's taken all of that energy and all of that effort. And it's a lot to waste, isn't it? So a really good old fashioned frugal tip is to keep all of the ends of your bread, your bread crusts. Keep all of them, that bread roll that it was too big you couldn't eat it, and keep a bag in your freezer of all the odds and ends of bread that you can keep. And then once in a while, take them out whilst they're frozen, and you can put them in the oven when the oven is on, and dry them out completely. So they're like biscuits. And if you do not have a food processor, what you can do is stick those crispy pieces of bread in a bag and use a rolling pin and break them up into tiny pieces and use them as breadcrumbs. You can then use those breadcrumbs in meatballs, in meatloaf. You can then use them if you're frying chicken or fish as a crust or a coating. You can make mashed potato and then roll those mashed potato balls in those breadcrumbs and fry them and make croquette potatoes. But please, stop wasting your bread. Now the next one is watch less television. How many people have got Amazon Prime, Disney, Netflix, Sky TV, cable TV, all of those things. And then you're sat down in front of it going click, click, click. There's nothing to watch. Because once you've binge watched your favourite series, shows or programmes, the rest of it really is a load of fluff, filling, rubbish. If you can do without some of it, one of it or all of it, You'll go back to their old fashioned ways because people in the past didn't have them, didn't miss them, could do without them. So, very big, good old fashioned, frugal, money saving way is watch less television. Most of it's a pile of rubbish anyway. I whittled that down to 20. I could think of so many others. I could have gone on for hours, but I love to read and do read every single one of your comments. And I know that viewers read the comments too. So please share below, what are your old fashioned frugal living tips? Maybe you do them and other people don't do them. So leave those below if you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.